we're at the SCI UK 2025, now on the large VAE Systems booth, and I'm very pleased to meet with uh, Gavin Rodgley. He's the chief engineer at uh, VAE Systems Maritime, and we're going to discuss two new ship concepts that the British shipbuilder unveiled uh, at the SCI UK this year. Gavin, great uh, to see you. Good afternoon. You. Good afternoon. So you unveiled these two vessel models and concepts. Can you please tell us more about the philosophy behind those two ships? Uh, well, the company for the last 10 years has been focusing on the Type 26 program, which is around ASW, anti-submarine warfare. And we're now starting to move towards looking to what the, our customers are telling us they need next, which is the future of air warfare. Uh, so we've been listening to what they want, uh, understanding what the, the challenges are, uh, and there's three challenges coming at us really that make a difference from the existing ships which are in service. So the first one is the evolving nature of the, the threats and we're seeing much more the emergence of high-end threats but still with the traditional threats still existing. Uh, so the high-end threats, what we mean by that is high, high altitude, high speed, high mass, high mobility. So uh, the complexity and the challenges in uh, encountering those has gone up. So we need uh, the concept of layered defense, so the appropriate uh, effector to, for the, the relevant uh, threat. And we need a, a system to systems approach where we're leveraging the capabilities of multiple platforms together through a connected network the, through the, the combat management system uh, to provide proper defense against across a, an area. Uh, so that's, the, that's led us to the two concepts, one of which is a command ship and one of which is a, a deployed sensor effector platform. The, the other challenges for both of them uh, include crewing, so people, so customers are looking to reduce uh, the complement. And it's a different style or nature of the seafarer, so there is, in reducing crews and providing more automation and autonomy, on the ships, uh, potentially through the use of AI. It's a different, uh, the, the culture in the Navy in terms of how they operate ships, how they support them, how they train for them is going to have to evolve in parallel. Uh, so that's the people piece. And the final thing is really about the life cycle of these ships. So uh, ships, merchant or naval, tend to stay in service for decades. But the technology that they host and they operate uh, has a much shorter lifespan. So we need to introduce increasing amounts of adaptability in the, in the designs through margins, through space, through modularity, uh, and the ability to reconfigure ship systems, particularly power management, uh, with the, the onset of directed energy weapons and the, the need to shift power from the propulsion to the energy weapons and then back again. Uh, so there's, there's lots of technology development that we're working out with other companies uh, to, to take that forward. And now we've ended up with these two concepts, uh, which we would like to you know, uh, present to customers uh, in combination, not necessarily just these two, but this is two ships of an example where you can get leverage. So uh, that's where we are. Uh, Gavin, I understand uh, this is still very much uh, conceptual, but may you share some of the basic specifications for this vessel? Yeah, certainly. Um, so the, the pedigree for us is to draw on the Type 26 design as much as is possible and where relevant. Uh, so we have an understanding of the complexities of naval ships, but we need to put that into a, a future ship which meets customer needs. So we have a range of options which uh, provide a range of capability from uh, a simple, smaller ship, more cost effective, uh, to a larger ship which has more features and more complexity. So. The, the, the scale will be in, uh, the, the crew complement will be very low, uh, much significantly lower than the existing ships in, in the fleet, so below 100, uh, down to 75 and below for the core complement, so lots of automation. Uh, the ship sizes we're offering are between approximately 130 metres and 160 metres, and the, that size is driven by, principally by the main sensor array. So that's, we're looking to the future with what comes next in, in te radar technology. Uh, so upwards of 200, 250 tonnes with all the phased array panels uh, and the structure and the systems uh, to, to accommodate all of that. So it's quite significant and our power demand on the ship is quite significant.
the silos, the main effectors, is the, is the missile systems. Uh, so it's important to uh, not just it's not just quantity of missiles; it's the number of silos. So you have rate of fire. Uh, so two silos, one forward, one aft, uh, and then programmable munitions in the in the in the gun selection that gives that layer defence. And a central command function then would be hosted on this ship, and would then control other assets that contribute and provide leverage to the the air warfare uh, defence. So if I understand right, it could be a frigate in size or a or destroyer. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I mean, the, the terminology of frigate and destroyer is increasingly blurred. But at the smaller end, yes, more like a frigate. At the larger end. Uh, more like a destroyer, but I think it's important to see it as uh, not necessarily reflecting the traditional uh, complex nature of advanced uh, uh, advanced platforms. We need to focus on what are the key features that the ship needs to carry and offer that to our customers as a value for money solution. Lastly, Gavin, uh, this is your model for the wingman uh, vessel. Uh, same questions, can you please share the general specification? Certainly. Um, yes, yeah, certainly. So our term for this is a deployed sensor effector platform. So the intention is that it will carry additional sensors, so a small and artisan radar potentially, and additional missile silo, potentially guns as well, so a Bofors 40 mil or two of them, uh, to provide that leverage I talked about with the command ship. So it would operate in conjunction with, and we could easily have, say, four to six of these for one command ship. So you, you have that uh, networked capability for air warfare. The design of this ship is uh, a trimaran, so three hulled, uh, and the reason for that is that trimarans uh, exhibit good sea keeping behaviour of equivalently larger monohulls. They've got low resistance, so they can go reasonably fast, uh, so, and it has the depth of the hull to host the, the missile systems as well, which is productive. This particular design is based on a ship that we built 25 years ago, which was the research vessel Triton, uh, which is still floating in Portland. Uh, she's been around the world, she's done multiple roles, so she's demonstrated that she can cope in good sea states and still still operate. Uh, it's lean crewed, so 6 to 12 crew. Um, it has a, a, a heli deck, so you, you will need to be able to support this kind of ship, certainly in the northern North Atlantic and high sea states, and you'd be able to need to replenish them as well. So, But ultimately, we would be seeking to make them fully autonomous. So you take the people off of the platform altogether and it's solely controlled then from the command ship. Size-wise, uh, this is uh, 100 meters uh, length overall. Um, so it has that good sea keeping behavior. If you need to go faster, we might need to make it a bit bigger. Uh, but that's air warfare we talked about, but the configuration uh, provides an opportunity as well to provide a towed array capability at the stern end through uh, containerized uh, towed arrays or provide aviation training or do uh, patrol duties so it, it offers a, you know, it's a flexible platform for, for navies around the world then as well. All right Gavin, thank you so much for giving, giving us this uh, brief overview on this uh future uh, vessel concepts thank you very much thank you very much too.